Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, today the content is directly from Giffords.org. Now, Giffords.org is a gun control group in the United States. It's one of the biggest ones. It's that in every town in the USA. They have some things on their website which are incredibly intriguing to me. For example, did you know that they claim that they can reduce gun violence by 50% in two years without taking a single gun? I, if I had not read this and researched this, I would have said I'm crazy. But this is here, guys, and we're going to do a report because they are on to something here. And I have not heard any politician say it. I have not heard any gun, uh, gun control advocate say it. Because if it's truly about stopping the epidemic of gun violence in the United States, it's on their own webpage, an entire report, and they haven't even mentioned it. And we're going to dive into it right here because this is crucial. If we can meet on and understand where they're coming from on not infringing the Second Amendment, but actual solutions to the problems that they are trying to fix, this is a place we can start a conversation. You are not touching our gun rights. However, the other things here we're about to talk about are really impactful, and I want you guys to watch this whole video because this is crazy. On a separate note, we reached 300,000 subscribers, and that's because of you guys. I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. We are on the cutting edge of the Second Amendment defense, and we are going to pass along this blessing to the next generation because you guys are helping me with this channel every single day. I'm going to put out a separate video thanking you guys a little more in depth, but for now, let's get back to this because this is impactful, and I want to know what you guys think in the comments field below. All right. So, like I said, they claim they can reduce gun violence by 50% in two years without taking a single gun. Let's dive into it. So first off, they have to say this on the top of the page, and it's all linked in the description box, but limiting access to guns is an important component of any strategy to save lives. I do not agree with that at all, whatever. But it's equally important to invest in the evidence-based and remarkably effective community-driven programs that disrupt cycles of violence and support people in crisis. If it's equally important, why are we not hearing equal parts? We're only hearing take the guns. That's the question. We are always looking at the why, right? Why are they behaving in the ways that they're behaving? If on their own website, it says it's just as important, but you only hear about the gun seizures, okay? And the gun uh, revoke, revoking of rights. Now, I'm gonna keep going through and I'm gonna analyze this as best I can for you guys. Like I said, I wanna know what you think in the comments field below. So the problem that they state, over 13,000 people are murdered with a gun every year in the United States. The majority of these shootings take place in cities where violence is further concentrated spatially, racially, and within groups, gangs, or cliques, okay? Inside cities, gangs, racial, cliques. They're talking about violence between individuals. They're not talking about mass shootings. That's the first thing. The second thing on this quote that I really find interesting is I thought the number was 40,000. I thought gun violence claimed 40,000 lives annually because that's what you're hearing on the talking points. But on Giffords.org, they're saying 13,000 people are killed in homicides with guns every year. So that would mean that 27,000 were suicides. They're starting to show through their little scheme of, well, 40,000 people die a year. No, no, no. 13,000 are killed with guns. The rest kill themselves. And that's really bad, but that's a different scenario. Okay? Those are the two things I take from that. Now... There's a very heavy racial element to this article. I'm just going to tell you flat out. I'm ignoring that part right now. I just want to talk about the actual solutions that they're putting forward. So, on the right side right here, 60% fewer homicides with GVIs or gun violent interrupters. An evaluation of Boston's gun violence intervention program found a 63% reduction in youth homicides and a 25% decline in monthly gun assaults by using these gun violence um, inhibitors or interrupters is what they call them. So if, if, if the results are that amazing, why are we not hearing about it? Again, I'm gonna keep coming back to that because if that's really true, they're onto something, okay? On this piece, not the gun seizures or gun right attacks, this piece, gun violence interrupters. Now, the next thing that they do, and they're trying to prove their point that the people that actually create all the violence and create the homicides are a small portion of the population. Before I show you the graphic, does that sound familiar? That's the argument from the gun rights advocate side of, yes, there's going to be crazy people. That doesn't mean every single person who owns a gun is bad. It's the same argument, but they're using it to defend people in gang situations who are a minority of the populations that they're inflicting upon. Okay, That's important because they're using the exact same argument. There's common ground there. Now, the, the graphic is right here. It says 400,000 people in Oakland in 2012. 
they were 20,000 people who were estimated number of perpetrators, but there were actually only 400. In cities like Oakland, violence is perpetrated by a small, high-risk group that constitutes far less than 1% of the population, even in neighborhoods with the highest rates of violence. That's the exact same argument that gun rights advocates are speaking all the time. Some crazy people do some things with guns when you've got a million guns being sold a month in the United States, or 1.5, or like 300 million, there's a lot. This is a big deal, it's the same argument. Now, and I found that fascinating. Now you go into the solution, and this part is the impactful part. So bear with me, because we're almost through this, and then we're gonna kinda analyze it back out a little bit. The solution. Cities and states across the country are, provi are proving that we can achieve rapid, sustained reductions in shootings by investing in hard and evidence-based, community-driven strategies like group violence intervention, relationship-based street outreach, and hospital-based violence intervention programs. Each of these approaches focuses resources on the small fraction of the population at highest risk for engaging in deadly violence. These strategies have been proven remarkably effective, contributing a major drop in gun violence in cities in as little as two years. If that's true, why are we not talking about this instead of seizing the guns from people who have not done anything wrong? Do you see my point? There's a different why. There's a different reason. If you've got this data and you know this is on a gun control org, why are we not talking about this? Yeah. All right, so that's now. Now they go into the individual little segments that they just talked about. Group violence intervention. GVIs, or Focus Deterrence, is a form of partnership-based problem-solving pioneering under the name Operation Ceasefire in Boston in the mid-1990s. The strategy involves analyzing violent incidents and trends to identify individuals and groups at greatest risk for being shot or pulling the trigger. These individuals that are invited to call-ins where law enforcement, social service providers, and community members convey the message that the community wants them alive and safe and the shooting must stop. Strategy, excuse me, um, independent evaluations of GVI strategy have associated the program with between 30 and 60% reduction in overall homicides. Okay, they're analyzing the actual people who are doing the crimes and they're talking to people and actually getting involved in that area and they're seeing a 30 to 60% reduction. Again, that's what they're saying, it's not me. Relate, relationship based street outreach. Relationship-based street outreach strategies use a public health model treating gun violence as a communicable disease and working to interrupt its transmission among community um, members. Basically, what they're doing is they're saying, listen, someone hurts you, you don't hurt them back. They're stopping. That's what they're considering a community spread, like a disease. It's stopping the chain of transmission. That's what they mean. An independent evaluation of a cure of violence initiative in the South Bronx, which is New York, associated the program with a 37% decline in gun injuries and a 63% decline in shooting victimizations, such as armed robbery or murder. You're seeing 37 to 63% in both these indicators of reduction of gun violence, and you want to talk about the 0.001% who are causing problems with guns, and you want to take them away? It doesn't make sense, guys, and that's important. Now, hospital-based violence intervention... It's the same thing. Research shows that patients who receive HVIP services are four times less likely to be convicted of a violent crime and four times less likely to be subsequently re-injured. Okay, these numbers are crazy, all right? And this is the part that really kind of threw me because they throw on a little bit of uh, fiscal responsibility. Reduction efforts across the country compared to the annual cost of gun violence estimated at $229 billion. These programs are remarkably inexpensive, costing each city only a few million per year, talking about the three that they've recommended here. If this is true, 100% true, why are we not talking about this? There's not a single Republican conservative that would not have a conversation about this. There's not a single Democrat that would not have a conversation with Republicans about this. This is the point, guys. If we are ever going to move forward as a nation, and we're going to move forward as a Second Amendment, and we're going to move forward as freedom of speech, and we're going to be a unified nation, we have to understand that these conversations are what needs to be the forefront, not penalizing people who have not broken the law, and they are in by abiding the law, and they're embracing their Second Amendment rights. This is crucial. Why is this not on the main point of all arguments across the board? That's my question for you. But until tomorrow... I'm Braden. I'll see you later.